back in Bon Bon in 2019, and we're here with one of our favorite and most honored guests, Joseph Fitzcalin. We're very excited to have you here because you are the dentist at the Alpstein Clinic. Thank you, yes. And you worked at the Paracelsus before that. And right. why is a dentist so important to mm. what we do? And mm. I know for what in my mm. office, we could not do what we do without mm. a good bioregulatory dentist. I so agree. where did that start for you? And so my parents and relatives, they're all working in the field of uh, dentistry and medicine. Oh, wow. So for me, it was completely normal to, to know that, you know, a human being is made up of, of, of a head and, and a trunk and a body. So for me, it's absolutely natural to say, look, whatever we are, we're, we're a unity. We're an entity and uh, the entity, that's sort of uh, what makes the whole body medicine so, so unique and so precious. Yeah. Because a lot of people separate out the mouth. Right? In a, that in, can happen, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. oh, the teeth have nothing to do with the rest yeah, of your body. So yeah, it's so funny. It is funny. Well, no, I mean, it's so interesting that you mentioned, but um, it's actually not even my, my opinion. I mean, the most well-known um, health organization in the world is the WHO. Mm -hmm. And they have officially accepted in 2007 that oral health is part of, 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 of the body's health. Mm -hmm. So if you separate oral health from, uh, from whole body or from the body's health, then, then you're completely missing the whole point. So it seems so that there is a change coming, and obviously more and more people are aware. But uh, again, at the end of the day, what I always say, you know, we're, we're a unique uh, entity, and uh, we're probably the most complex species on the planet, both uh, physically, but also emotionally or mentally. Mm -hmm. Most people, you know, think about medicine, how important organs and so on. But when it comes to thinking about teeth, a lot of people are quite frightened. Mm -hmm. So it is a very sensitive topic. But uh, all I can say is that, you know, it's part of the, the whole body. And that means, you know, when we eat and drink, when we speak, it has a function. And uh, this is why from that point of view, also WHO, you know, which is classically conventional, uh, conventionally run, um, even they understand that there is a certain link. So more and more the oral microbiome and the link of periodontal issues uh, with, uh, with health symptoms like cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, uh, preterm labor, birth weight, PLBW, mm -hmm. I think this is what you call it also in America, mm -hmm. and even uh, lung diseases. Yeah. So, um, I mean, because these are living. Yeah, absolutely. Right, a lot of people just don't like think everything of that else is living. Well, I mean, it's just like everything else in our body. I mean, our body is based on on a, on a living cell function. So it needs mm -hmm. blood flow, it needs lymphatic drainage, it needs nutrition, it needs a good response, and it needs a good uh, good uh, interconnection. Yeah. And have you seen? I'm sure you have, so let's just discuss a couple of the cases that you've seen yeah. throughout your years where it's been yeah. miraculous when you know, they've got full yeah. body systemic stuff going mm. on, but then some mm. of the dentistry is handled yeah. and you see turnarounds quickly. At our clinic, at Upson Clinic, we never work as a single unit. When we do dental work, it's always accompanied uh, by, by medical work and the opposite goes for, for the medical work, so we always work together. and. We had some very interesting patients, you know, younger and older patients, for example. We had a younger patient from Australia who came along uh, 29, was given a diagnosis uh, linked to a neuro neurological disorder. And um, mm -hmm. she was already in a wheelchair having neurological signs and symptoms, weakness. And then we did all the medical support. And uh, unfortunately, she was really overloaded with dental metals. So we started to remove the dental metals, amalgam fillings. Amalgam some, fillings. Yeah, silver amalgam fillings. Yeah, silver fillings. <laughs> Which is um, really a misnomer. A silver filling yeah. isn't really silver. It's mercury. No. Well, I mean, that's the color. Tin, nickel, yeah. aluminum. Yeah, copper, copper. and, and uh, mercury. Which also. are all toxic. Well, I mean, to, to, to yeah, according to, again, your public health department, which is the ATSDR in America, it has a certain uh, potential toxic effect above a specific level. And again, we see more and more young people who, who suffer from this uh, from this. Uh, input of having a you know, dental field of disturbances, whether these are root canal treated teeth or amalgam fillings, metallic crowns, cranial mandibular disorders, uh, remnant jaw cavitations, these are all kind cranial of... Cranial mandibular uh, disorders, I yeah, 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 dysfunction. So this young woman yeah. came in, she has a neurological exactly. disorder, she's 29 years old, you yeah. start to replace her amalgam fillings with... First of all, you have proper procedure. So yeah, I mean, it's a very specific procedure with a bioregulatory dentist. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there are also protocols in America, but most important is to protect your patient mm -hmm. and to protect the, the team uh, working around the patient. And what does that mean, protecting well, the patient? There are some safety devices, you know, like rubber dam, cleanup suctioner, specific... Uh, high-powered suction. Yeah, high-powered suction and specific diamonds that you use uh, to, to remove the amalgam in, in, in parts instead of like drilling out and causing a lot of... Uh, 
amalgam and consequently mercury vapors. So a lot of gas. So yeah. instead of removing the gas and drilling it out, yeah. you'll remove ch chunks yeah. of it in big chunks. Yeah, it's like having a, I mean, it's Halloween, having like a Halloween pumpkin. Right. You know, and cutting up in pieces and taking out sure. piece by piece. Sure. So um, from that point of view, that's quite interesting. And uh, with her, you know, we really looked, looked into her case and, and did a great uh, pre and after work also. You know, replaced those fillings, which were small in size, with uh, hypoallergenic composite fillings. And Hypoallergenic the, yeah, composite, so yeah, resin. resin compound fillings. <clears throat> and the remainder where the tooth defect was just above a sp specific percentage of, of, of the tooth size. Uh, we just used um, yeah, ceramic restorations mm -hmm. so in the form of inlays, onlays, uh, crowns. Ceramic because it's biocompatible. There's well, that's probably current. Issues. Yeah, I mean, you know, I wouldn't say no issue. You know, anything that you put in the body stays a foreign body. But mm -hmm. if you can pick between a metallic restoration and a ceramic restoration, certainly looking at the immunological state and the whole body medicine approach, that's the least uh, interfering mm -hmm. substance that, that we can apply okay. from dental point of view. And so, um, fortunately, this uh, young young girl, you know, 29, half years later, she's already out of the wheelchair. So. Six months later, yeah, she was out of the wheelchair. Yeah. The younger generations will develop diseases much sooner because um, yeah, we, we are constantly under the influence of, uh, yeah, of, of uh, toxic load from our surrounding environment. Yeah. Right. So, um, from this point of view, she was fortunate. So, after six months, she was able to do the switch to get out of the wheelchair. Some people might need three months, other people might need three to four years. Mm -hmm. You don't know, but um, she was uh, very fortunate. We were very proud to, to be given the honor to help her in, in her healing and regeneration. So, And by essentially removing the blockade, yes. allowed her body to go into healing capacity. Yeah, exactly. And then I'm sure you did other manual therapies and IVs uh, yeah. and supportive yeah. therapy to help her drain out. Yeah. Because what you did as the dentist was stop the leak. Yeah, exactly. Correct? Like yeah. you got the silver filling out, the amalgam filling out, you stopped the leak, mm. and then the medical side cleaned, helped her body yeah. clean up. And I'm sure something Yeah, it's like, like a barrel effect, you know. Right. Whenever you, you stop filling up a barrel, you, you can reduce the symptoms and you can start uh, regenerating health and body. Otherwise, you can have the risk of pushing additional toxic load into the body, even though you're detoxing. So. So she was a, a great, great example. Yeah, yeah that's fantastic. And that's so uh, rewarding, I'm sure. Yeah, very uh, much. As a physician, yeah. <laughs> to be able to help somebody to that yeah. extent. And also with other patients who had uh, digestive tract disorders. A lot of patients who have digestive tract disorders or chronic systemic diseases, lung diseases, you know, breathing, COPD. Mm -hmm. A lot of them uh, also have a periodontological background. So a lot of them have periodontitis, have root canary teeth. And yeah, we actually once had a... Yeah, famous uh, reporter from Sky, Sky Sports, you know, which is quite big in Europe. And uh, she had exactly on those uh, meridians, which was quite interesting, linked to the digestive tract and breathing and lung. She had root canal treated teeth, unfortunately with, uh, with uh, overfilled fillings and uh, insufficient fillings and consequently periapical infections. And also with her, together with a medical and dental approach combined together as a team, yeah, we were able to to gently or minimal invasively remove the field of disturbances. In this case, these were unfortunately root canal treated teeth. And, so let's um, back up just a second. Yeah. So the teeth are on a meridian. Yeah, so exactly. Just, so these are your reproductive organs, right? Yeah. And, with this. I mean, you can see it in the way either, you know, you go from the middle to the outside or you can yeah. say whatever is in the midline is also in the midline of my body, okay. sort of. Okay. This is uh, an easy explanation. Okay. And, so these um, were the digestive teeth back here. Exactly, and molars. And she was having a lot of digestive disturbances. Yeah, yeah and the recurrent uh, upper respiratory tract infections. Upper respiratory well. yeah. tract infections. And she had periodontal issues and root canals yeah, exactly. in these teeth. Exactly. And what it, a root canal for the layperson yeah. is where a tooth yeah, exactly. has an infection. Mm, yes, sort of. I mean, it can be an infection or it can, can be quite deep filling. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, again, you need to pull the root. Well, you need you have to pull the uh, the root canal or the nerve. the nerve. There, there's a bundle inside the the tooth root that, that you have to remove, to uh, well get the patient symptom free, to make the patient pain free. So they just they yeah. leave the tooth in a root canal yeah. and pull out the root. Yeah, it's like having a dead finger and just pulling the nerve from a dead finger. Which so would be crazy. I trained as a biological maxillofacial surgeon, so I have both degrees. 
during my medical training, if someone would have told me, look, there's a gangrenous bowel or there is a skin burn, second, third degree, there is a dead finger, pull the nerve or pull the bundle and leave it on, they would have probably shot me. Right. So, you right. know, it's unphysiological. You need to have living tissue to work and function. So essentially, a, a root yeah. canal is leaving dead material in the mouth. Well, it's leaving a dead structure with a the tooth, yeah. The and what's so fatal about it is that uh, a root canal treated tooth, you know, sits in an environment which is an open environment. So we breathe, we eat, we drink, and we swallow everything. Mm -hmm. And all together, we have uh, millions of bacteria which are normally in, in a healthy constitution. But uh, if you put in, you know, chambers or sort of like areas where bacteria can grow. And develop into bad bacteria, then uh, there is a risk of, of causing spreading of disease into the body. And that's affecting the terrain, which we've talked yeah, a lot about on exactly. our previous videos. If you exactly. haven't watched those, go back and watch those. But talking about the milieu or the terrain, yeah. the environment in which it cells exactly. live, and what you're talking about is the milieu of the mouth. Absolutely. That the teeth are living yeah. in this open environment that are yeah. exposed to all sorts of things that's very true. waste and toxins yeah. and foods we're eating. And yeah. so that creates an opportunity for more degradation, more exactly. degeneration to occur. The funny thing is, you know, when we speak about milieu, a lot of people only speak about gut milieu. But the digestive tract uh, starts with, you know, to be frank with our lips right. and at, ends at the bottom. And that's, that's an entire unity. That's one organ in itself. And this, uh, you know, it has been also understood by the WHO. Since 2007, they have legally accepted this. So, so a root canal tooth is yeah. a... So temporary. It's uh, at least in Europe they teach you that uh, that it's a uh, it's a last resort to do a root canal treatment to take the pain away, but uh, it's not a long-lasting uh, satisfactory therapy, which is understandable because once again our body is 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 uh, living on the fact that everything needs to have blood flow, nutrition, and lymphatic drainage. Right. So it, it blood needs flow, to nutrition, and lymphatic drainage. Yeah. My favorite so, subject. These, these are super important. So it's understandable that uh, if, if you create uh, an environment without the necessary foundation for our body, for our cells, that you will cause something by it. And mm -hmm. we know that especially because in the oral cavity, in the oral area, there are so many bacteria. This is a great habitat for bacteria. I mean, every, every bacteria that we have, it has a good function. Right. But with a external inflow, you know, you can create so much uh, field of disturbances and Again, bacteria are not stupid. I mean, bad bacteria, they want to live. Good bacteria want to help us. So but every bad bacteria will, will tell you, look, oh, thank you so much, leaving behind a dead tooth. That's right. so, so good for me because I go in there, I can, I can live freely and produce my toxins and, and just have a great, great life, you know. And so back to the meridians. So if yeah. that root canal is on the large intestine yeah, meridian, exactly. it's going to affect yeah. distally, longer, yeah. farther away. Further away. It, from where that connects yeah. to. The same so goes the opposite. Can start yeah. here and affect this, or yeah. this can affect that. Absolutely. This is why a lot of people who have uh, digestive tract disorders, like chronic inflammatory bowel diseases, a lot of them have, have a periodontological issue coming with it. So this is why you know everything is connected to each other. And this particular patient, so mm. you, re you removed her root canals, I presume? Yeah, sure. we removed it under biological uh, guidelines, minimum invasively, and uh, gave the bone time to heal and to regenerate. Then we adjusted her cranium mandibular system, which is always very important when we... Shut her... her, 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 her well, her yeah. sacral rhythm. Yeah, so at the end of the day, you know, the lower, lower jaw, that's part of the human posture. And whenever you remove teeth or you replace teeth, you have to make sure that the posture stays symmetrical and, and harmonic from, from the bite point of view because this will affect the remaining human posture. So, so many people yeah. in America get braces. They mm. do Invisalign. Yeah. They do all this work on yeah. their mouth. And yeah. they never consider yeah. necessarily what that's doing to yeah. their neck and their back and their spine mm. as we both sit up straight. It's very true. Yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, look, uh, th there's always, from the, the whole body approach, there's always a skeletal approach to correct the bites, uh, but you should not underestimate the importance of the muscular, condylar adjustment that, that's required with it. Because the bone, you know, the bone is attached to muscles, ligaments, mm -hmm. and these all have a function and these all work. You know, so it's like a resonance chain. Yeah. So it's yeah. like a resonance chain. So whatever, you know, gives you an upset. In the, in the oral cavity can affect your neck, can affect your back, can affect your pelvic area. Right. 
and so on, you know, cranium as well. And then from the spine perspective, if the spine is compromised, it's not going to be able to send the nerves, aren't going to be able to conduct. Well, yeah. And then you're not going to get information to the gut. So even if you yeah, extract those exactly. teeth, that's not enough necessarily. Well, yeah, it's a part, part, part of the <clears throat> treatment approach mm -hmm. that we apply at Option Clinic. When clients go to their standard dentist, they go, yeah. oh, I want to get my amalgams out. I heard yeah. this was bad. Or they go to, oh, I want to get my root canal extracted. What hmm. <laughs> What would you say to them to educate them in regards to why they would want to seek out a bioregulatory dentist? I mean, um, in most cases, it's really the case that patients come to us who have been to many, many dentists, many doctors. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like their last resort. But uh, what we do is just to show them, uh, according to evidence-based uh, diagnostical tools, what's really happening in the body. So uh, we really look at the causes instead of the symptoms. And looking at the causes uh, makes people understand, okay, that if there's a cause, and if you have a backpack or a barrel, and you f fill that up with, uh, with uh, in terms of environmental toxins, for example, then something will happen in your body. So, I mean, uh, from this point of view, we can only encourage and, uh, and uh, communicate openly with our patient and uh, show them the clarity th that there is in, in whole body medicine. But the procedure honest. that mm. you would use to extract a tooth would be very different than a standard dentist in well, yeah, I mean, the States, uh, I would presume. Well, I mean, obvi dental, obviously like there's, a, so yeah, I mean, there's a conventional approach that, that we all taught at university, and I think it's very important to have the conventional uh, education because sure. you, need, you need to have a, a foundation but uh, like in every country there is always a pathway for continuous professional development right. and this is something uh, that, that's allowed in Europe especially in Switzerland and uh, we're so fortunate on that basis because from this point of view we're able to merge you know the conventional with the biological approach and bring, bring the best out for our patient. You know, it's not really our, our, our responsibility to, to tell the patients that, you know, your dentist is bad or your dentist has done something wrong. I mean, everybody does the best in their capability or what, what they're able to do. In their knowledge base. Yeah, yeah. But for the consumers to be yeah. aware that there are very different trained dentists that mm. are skilled and have mm. further educated themselves yeah. in regards to how to replace amalgam fillings in exactly. a safe way to protect them, how to handle yeah. root canals and, or, or yeah. cavitations yeah, exactly. and a cavitation is yeah. a hole in a bone versus a hole in a tooth yeah exactly and and that can be dangerous why well, again uh, it's part of the digestive tract so at the end of the day it's an organ in itself and it's linked linked to so many other um, yeah pathways in our body and from that point of view anything that is uh, not uh, controlled by, by the immune system or is, is dead tissue, is inflammatory tissue, will uh, spread. And um, from uh, evidence-based knowledge, we know that um, everything that communicates in the body has to run in 75% of the cases through, through the lower jaw and the, and the jaw joint area. So from this point of view, you have the most lymph nodes in the neck area, okay? It's, uh, they can be differentiated into 9 to 12 different groups. This is why it's so disastrous when people have dental issues or even like an oral cancer that uh, this spreads very, very rapidly and aggressively into the body. Because so, of the lymphatic. Yeah, the lymphatic, the blood flow. So venous drainage, uh, arterial blood flow, lymphatic drainage, nerval communication. Anything that happens in the body, 75% has to cross the mouth, to put it in, in simple, simple words. Wow. And this is why, you know, people completely underestimate it. So nowadays still, you know, there's much more awareness, but what it needs, it just needs to be a, the best approach for every patient on an individual level, understanding that the greatness that we're giving, knowing about medicine and dentistry, that, that needs to be combined to, to achieve the greatest healing or, or well-being outcome for our patient. We're very blessed to have organizations and, and people like you around the world who are open and who also want to continue their professional development. Yes. And uh, we're so blessed to be able to, to cooperate with you and work together in the best interests yes. of all patients that, that we see yes. all around the world. So The dentist that comes from yeah. the heart, Dr. Joseph. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly.